Good morning from New Zealand, Aotearoa, and I am with today Melissa Reynolds. Um, I just want to introduce myself before we start. I'm Deb Thompson, and I'm a fibromyalgia coach, and I help women with fibro feel better and um, get back to doing the things in their life that they love. And the way that works for me is a three-step process. Um, first of all, I help you with your healing because that has to come first. And then we work on individualized, personalized strategies that are going to work for you long term. And thirdly, we um, embed those strategies and um, and you some, see real progress that you can keep continuing with. Um, so I really love this work and I'm really, really pleased to have Melissa here with me today. And happy um, Fibromyalgia Awareness Month, Melissa. Thank you, and you as well. <laughs> so just to introduce you, um, Melissa Reynolds is uh, someone I actually know personally, which is brilliant. She lives just up the road. Um, but when I first found her on the line, um, I didn't know her at all. Melissa is a um, mother of four, a tireless fibromyalgia advocate uh, through her work with Melissa versus Fibro. Um, she's an author. Um, you want to hold up your book? Melissa, it's not not the only book that you have written, and I know you're doing one at the moment. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Fibromyalgia Won't Win is is Melissa's uh, book that she's holding up there. Um, what have we got? Fibro mum, advocate, author, yoga and meditation teacher, which is how I came to find you uh, because I was Googling online um, yoga for fibromyalgia and You've given so much um, to the community with that. So I really, really want to thank you for that. So, um, Melissa, just tell me a little bit about, I mean, the thing that I, that I was, uh, that I came to you um, over was the, was the, the yoga and the meditation and, you know, I still use it now. Um, what made you decide to do that? Well, I have been doing, well, I did Pilates for a long time and then I moved into yoga and I, I guess I've just never had this block of um, thinking of perfection in yoga. You know, people are, are, yeah. are often stopped from trying it because they think it's a certain thing and you have to look like a pretzel and you have to be able to do a long class. And I knew that wasn't the case. Um, mm -hmm. And when my first son was very young, I had a yoga teacher come to my house and adapt the sun salutations routine for me. Um, but then, of course, you, you get stuck again. Um, and so I kept getting stuck and all I wanted to do was be able to do yoga, but I had all of these changing variables because across my four pregnancies, um, it turns out that I have hypermobility and mm -hmm. um, my hypermobile pelvis caused many problems um, mm -hmm. during pregnancy and after. And um, so I've had to adapt very carefully. I have to be very mindful of my movement. And it got to the point where... I would go on YouTube and I would try a class that says it's for beginners or for when you're in pain. And it was ridiculous, mm -hmm. like just not mm -hmm. acceptable. And so I, um, when I was on maternity leave with my third son, I found that you can do online teacher training. Mm -hmm. And um, I researched the teacher and she made online teacher training because she could remember back to when she was getting into yoga and she had small children and it was so difficult for her to figure out how to leave them and go and do the training mm. and mm. it was expensive and and she just made it affordable um and she has a very large following now like I think I was in the early days of her online work and now it's just massive and so I said I'm going to do this so I trained um for a four-month period with um while on maternity leave. So I had a baby and, and two other children. And everything I workshopped, I workshopped it in my own body and I was researching and making sure that everything was fibromyalgia approved. Because um, mm -hmm. at that time, that was the only word I had. And when I finished my course, um, my teacher training course, I created my course, The Foundations of Yoga for Chronic Pain and mm -hmm. Fatigue. So I wanted to remember everything. Mm -hmm. um, a complete beginner's kind of journey to doing yoga. Yeah. Um, and so I did that because I want everybody to be able to choose a practice that suits them because the benefits of yoga are so much more. Like, yes, it's physical, but also sometimes it's reclaiming something you used to be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's about your, your nervous system. Yeah. 
And when you come back in line with your body and you pay attention to your body and you listen to the cues it's telling you and you move with your breath, you are reconnecting body and brain, which gets disconnected when you're living with high levels of pain and mm. you know nothing to help. Um, I found I was very disconnected. I was just like, my body is a giant ball of fibromyalgia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it has so many benefits. Um, yeah. But then once I did my teacher training, I realized that my passion isn't necessarily for the physical practice. So I am passionate about meditation. So I went on to do a meditation teacher training and I've done a couple of yoga nidra specific courses and I am in the middle of a breath work um, course because mm -hmm. I'm really interested now in the impact on the nervous system. That's oh, where all my kind of focus at the moment is, yeah. is the brain and the yeah. nervous system. Yeah, um, and we and we do know that, don't we? That um, fibro mm -hmm. is a nervous system disease. I I think um, one of the things you said that was really interesting to me was that losing the bodily cues. I think when a when your nervous system's in this, such a high state, you you just can't you just surviving really aren't you you're not thriving at all you're just surviving and mm -hmm. you can't actually see what your body's telling you like you say a giant ball of fibro and that's actually I think um what I see in my clients is it's that when I when I talked about healing you've actually got to bring your body back to the point where you can recognize what it's doing and your practices um are really really helpful for that um the other thing that you said that was really interesting was that you adapt it and I think people don't do stuff with fibro mm. because they think yeah you've got to twist yourself into a pretzel shape but that's not been um well it was what I tried to do to begin with but mm. thanks to you um I learned that any little thing that I do any little movement and any little bringing down on my nervous system is actually really really helpful right mm -hmm. yeah that's something I will shout from the rooftop for the rest of my life is mm. you can do five minutes you can yeah. do one minute, you can do 10 minutes, you can exactly. do a whole practice of mm. um, mm. supported child's pose. Um, mm. It doesn't have to Absolutely. look one way. Um, and I've actually taken those principles and I use them, well, I use them in every part of my life, but I'm using it now in building my strength. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like you can do five micro squats to start. Mm. Um, and At the I bench. Really you can do it when you're brushing your teeth. You can. And I have. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. that, um, it's that, uh, the couple of things that, 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 um, uh, Kaizen principle of, you know, 1%, tiny steps. I really believe in tiny little steps. Mm -hmm. You just take the tiniest of step and add another little step and another little step until you go, oh, I made some progress. <laughs> Actually, it's mm -hmm. that, but it's also that sort of, um, atomic habits thing, um, mm -hmm. where you're putting something like, you know, so when you're brushing your teeth, you're doing a little, yeah Jack, yes I oh, mean that's, that's how I have achieved everything everyone says I don't know how you do it and I'm like well yeah. I just do it right you choose yeah. something achievable and you just yeah. get on with it uh, yeah. that's how I've written books that's how yeah. I started a blog that's how I um improved my physical fitness that's how I improved yeah. my health that's how I approach everything and yeah. I have the audacity to believe I can do anything it yeah. might not be and perfect, yeah. but I will start anyway. Yeah. And it doesn't, it, I think perfect is the enemy of us in any race, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think everybody's everybody's starting point is different, really. Everybody's position of I can do this has to come from where they are. If you, if you can't get off the couch, then that's your goal. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Melissa here. I hope you enjoyed that interview that I did with Deb Thompson. She is an incredible coach and I have been friends with her since long before she did uh, the coaching. As she, um, as we you saw in the preview, we talked about the fact that we actually met because she found my yoga program and she was a student with me. And then after that, she went on to do her training to be a fibromyalgia coach. I hope that you found value in this talk. This preview really was just um, talking about um, yoga and how um, we can find it helpful and how we need to give ourselves permission to adapt and that that adaptation should really work in all facets of our life. But if you would like the full talk, then head on over. Um, it's Deb Thompson Coaching. I'll put the link below and you can sign up to get the full video. And um, do take a while to check out her resources because she is an incredible and empathetic coach 
who has the lived experience and from time to time people ask me if I am doing coaching and the answer is no I just have way too much um, going on to be able to focus on it properly and it needs it deserves to be focused on properly so Deb is your person if you um, would like help in that way but I just hope that you enjoy our talk and that you take something out of it and happy awareness month